Hello everybody, I'm Sarah and I'm a recorder player. I'd like to apologise for the state of my hair today. It is not greasy, it's just wet. This week is a really, really, really crazy week. A total of nine different concerts and I'm a bit sleep deprived. A little bit up. Okay. Welcome back to my channel. This week's video has been requested by a lot of you and it's kind of a follow on from last week. Last week we were talking about hand position on your recorder and this week we are going to get into how to stretch your hands to play the big recorders. I'm talking about the voice flute, the tenor and the bassette and we're even going to get into the great bass and the contrabass today. It is possible for you to play all of these instruments. I actually have really small hands. I measured my hands band today and it's 18 centimetres which isn't that big. I can play uh, an octave on the piano and that's about it. So I don't have huge hands but I can play all of these big instruments and it comes with practice. So as long as you are in good physical health I am confident that you too can play all of these big recorders. I really sound like a one of those American infomercials. And also at the end of the video I'm going to be discussing a whole range of ways in which you can adapt or help yourself if um, the kind of physicality of it is difficult for you, so don't worry. Number one. Just like any physical activity, a good warm up is crucial. Now that we're talking about the big recorders, we're looking at a bigger stretch for your fingers and a bigger range of mobility for your wrists. So these are a couple of warm ups that I like to do that I find really help. I like to give my wrists a good stretch out. So I'm just pushing on one with the other. I like to give my fingers and thumbs a stretch. So I press them together and just giving your ring finger some a special attention and we're gonna see why later. And the different kind of posture we're gonna have means that our forearms, especially down here, really needs to be stretched. My favorite stretch for this is put your arm out in front of you, turn your palm outwards, and put your hand back, so we're doing this. And then take your other hand and carefully pull your hand towards you and you should feel all down here stretching. Other arm out, palm outwards, bend hand at 90 degrees. Ugh. This should feel like good, ah. If you feel pain, like, then stop, that's not good. And it sounds silly, but I find when stretching the big recorders, it really helps to actually be warm. Make sure your fingers and hands are warm and you can stretch a lot further. One more, 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 more. Two. I will say this now, I will say it a thousand times, hand position is everything. If you haven't watched my video from last week on hand position, I really recommend doing that first because then you have the foundation. But I'll give the basic tenets here. Everything should be as natural as possible. Try when holding the recorder to have one nice line of your arm and your hand, so no dropped wrists. No, yes. No, yes. And your thumb and your fingers are aiming for a nice orange apple shape, not a banana. And you don't want your hands to be coming upwards because then your ring fingers will never reach, but you want to have your fingers a nice kind of, if possible, 90 degree angle to the recorder. And you can also help yourself by raising the recorder. If you have it down like this, you're gonna be squashed in and it's gonna feel like it's falling all the time. Raise it up a bit and you're much more supported and much more in balance. With the bassette recorder and bigger, of course you're not gonna do this. I personally find it helps to have my bassette not straight in front of me, but out to the side. I'm gonna step back a bit so you can see, like this. Then I have this hand kind of in a nice position here, this hand in a nice position kind of like this, everything feels good. And a key to managing the big recorders is also balance. Be aware that when you're going from a note with a lot of fingers to a note with not so many fingers, 
the center of balance is going to shift. Even just this awareness can already do wonders. But I can uh, recommend practicing this, for example, by playing some octaves. <laughs> And of course, <laughs> our good faithful friends, scales. Scales are nice because they, the center of balance is shifting a lot more gradually than if you're playing octave jumps or arpeggios. Do not support the recorder with your little fingers. This is really not helpful because then these fingers are all anchored in place. And actually to put this finger on the recorder, you're making this kind of claw-like hand position for yourself. And I also spoke in my last video about supporting the recorder with your right little finger and why that's also not a good idea. So the balance of the recorder is actually just held by your right thumb and your lip. recorders and have a little look at my hand position. I'm going to move the camera down, 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 down. <laughs> so looking at my voice flute and my tenor, the voice flute is a tiny bit smaller, but it is made of a heavier wood and it doesn't have a key at the bottom. So I find my voice flute a little bit harder to play than my tenor. <laughs> from the alto is that the fingers are a bit more spread out and the thumb might have to move slightly in its rotation but we have this which is pretty okay because my wrist is still in a nice line and then on the right hand we have this which is actually pretty okay it's basically a flat hand and then you're bringing these fingers around which is still pretty natural the thing that gets harder with the bigger instruments is that your wrist is having to rotate a bit, so just be really aware of that. Looking at the tenor, we have the same story, but because we have a key, your right hand is allowed to be a lot more relaxed because you've got the key work down here. If you find big recorders a stretch, I can really recommend looking for a tenor with a C and a C-sharp key on the bottom. And with the tenors, it's so important to make sure your hands are not rotating themselves upwards. You want your fingers to be nicely perpendicular. If they rotate upwards, oh, look at that, ring finger can't reach. Let's look at the bassette. We have even more help here. We have keys for the left ring finger, the right index finger, and the right pinky. The challenge for the bassette, at least a modern version, isn't gonna be the stretch on your fingers. It's gonna be the rotation of your right wrist. I'm gonna step back so you can see. Because the instrument is so long, we end up with this down here. So what would be a very natural hand position here becomes <laughs> I sometimes find, and this is really bad, if I'm playing the set after having a break for a long time, and I relax my arm and I feel like tingles shooting up and down. And that means that I've gone too far, I've practiced for too long and I'm too tense. So be really aware with the beset to keep taking regular breaks and paying special attention to your right wrist. The nice thing about uh, Yamaha besets is that they have a built-in thumb rest with a little hoop for a sling. It just takes the weight of the instrument and allows me to balance in the right place. You want to see a bigger recorder? Before we go further, it's time for some very exciting news. Finally, I can announce that I am the newest member of the Royal Wind Music. This is a unique recorder ensemble based in Amsterdam, and it's made up of 12 people that play an incredible consort of Renaissance recorders. I'm so excited to be a member of this group and we have some concerts coming up this week in Germany. I have some parts on the C bass and the F contrabass instruments. These are big recorders and I have been spending my summer training. This is the C bass recorder. Right now it's standing on the ground and it looks like this. These instruments were all made by Adriana Brokink, a recorder player here in the Netherlands. As you can see, the holes are pretty 
too far apart. And we only have one key down there on the bottom. So to put this into context, my Yamaha F Bassette has four keys. This is a much bigger recorder and it only has one key. <laughs> So for me, the process of learning to stretch this instrument was regular short practice. I didn't do more than five to 10 minutes a day because I didn't want to injure myself. It's like stretching in any kind of physical thing, when you're, whether you're doing gymnastics or yoga, build it up very slowly. And I also did a lot of readjusting. I would go for the G and get and have to wiggle, readjust, wiggle, readjust, really feeling the holes. And also remember I spoke about the rotation of the wrist. That can help a lot for the ring finger. It's often the ring fingers that are the victims in all of this. So I was just really feeling that ring finger and kind of digging my finger in there to feel where it was. But it didn't stop there. I don't only have parts on the C base, but also the F base, which is even one size bigger. Are you ready for this? This is an F contrabass recorder, also by Adriana Broking. It's 191 centimeters tall. It has a crook coming from the top of the recorder. And again, it's only got one key. The stretch on this recorder is significant. In the beginning, I could only play this note and I really had to very gradually train myself then this note Oh, then this note. And now it actually goes really fine. And here's a tip for you. If you have a range of recorders to practice on, I recommend training yourself on one size bigger than you need. After training myself to play the F bass recorder, that C bass is easy. So the stretch for my left hand is this. And the stretch for my right hand is this. Build up to it slowly. And as soon as you start to feel pain or tingling, stop and take a break. With regular training, good stretching, it's amazing how much further you can stretch than you think you're gonna be able to. Hi everyone, it's Sarah here, as you can tell. Um, I'm editing this video and I'm realising that it's getting really long. I wanted to start talking now about all different creative solutions and I was going to go into thumb rests, keys, slings, crooks, all of this stuff but I'm realising this video is going to be 16 years long. So if it's alright with you, I'm going to split it up. Next week this video with all of those solutions is going to come. Um, and I think I've given you enough this week to be going on with the stretching of big recorders. Maybe you can get into it this week and let me know how you got on. If you already have questions for next week, oh, this is a bit like real time teaching. Oh. But anyway, I'm going to close this video now. I hope you had fun. I certainly did. And I'll um, send you back over to the other Sarah. I have better hair today. Thank you for watching my video on how to stretch your hands for the big instruments. Just keep stretching, just keep doing it. I would be very happy if you would subscribe to my channel, that way you can keep up to date with the exciting world of the recorder. Thanks for watching and have a great day. Bye!